in this video you will learn how to set up a complete dropshipping store and how to create a complete multilingual mainchimp campaign and integrating your mainchimp with your woocommerce website so if you haven't subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you get notified anytime i publish new video so before we continue I made a video um, recently, uh, a tutorial guide on explaining everything which you're about to do uh, here today. So it's just like a quick overview, and I did I created a present a PDF presentation as well. So this is the video. If you haven't to watch the video, I will advise you first watch this before you continue watching this video so you can have a grasp and a better idea of what i'm about to explain to you today and also um we are going to be following uh the mention official guide uh, relating to the conditional math tag here as, as illustrated here so this is the guide which i'm going to use to explain to you how everything works so uh, i will also leave the, this link the link to this guide i will leave it in the description of the video so it's, it will be available for you guys to to go through and follow along and then you can also make reference to that as well and lastly uh i'll say if uh if you don't have a main chip account set up yet you need to have a main chip account for you to be able to uh do everything which you're about to talk about uh do it here today so if you don't have a main chip account just go to mainchimp.com and create an account just for free so you don't have to pay for the premium package or any any plan before you can be able to set everything up so I personally i don't have a premium package plan and uh, we are going to see everything and i'm going to show you guys how everything works so stay tuned relax uh, take a cup of coffee and let's get started in today's uh, video my plan is to make sure you every one of us we understand we understand how uh, conditional match tag actually work in mainchimp or most especially for our email marketing campaign so how can we use it apply it to our business or how can you apply it to your client or someone else's business to boost your conversion rate and the funny thing about this is uh, when I first got started in marketing a few years back because I started as a data marketer, I I have zero knowledge about how this work. So I was actually uh, checking out how mentioned work back then and I came across this conditional matter. So it took me a lot of time to analyze and see how what's actually the benefit and how to actually set it up so which is why i th this video would be like a, a walkthrough guide or everything you, you need to understand in terms of setting the conditional math tag increasing your conversion rate and setting up a multilingual marketing campaign including creating your own personalized also so the video will be divided into various sections in section one uh we learn about getting domain how can you buy a domain name this next section we talk about hosting where you can get hosting then in the third section I'll be talking about SSL. How can you set up and install SSL uh, using Namecheme specifically? Then, in the next session, we we'll talk about how can you choose a niche for your business. 
then the next section will be how to install wordpress and set up our website so we'll be setting up our website making use of wordpress so if you are not familiar with wordpress um so i'll be showing you guys how you can set it up quickly and as fast as possible then in the next section i will be explaining to you and showing you how to install a premium team where you can get premium team without paying any dime then uh, the following session will include customizing a website so mainly we'll be building an e-commerce platform making use of WooCommerce. then uh, the next session will be about setting up a main team account and um, how to go about integrating MailChimp with uh, WooCommerce or with our website which will be the next section then how can you create audience list then how to create a match tag that will be used for creating and setting up a conditional match tag statement then how can you create a group creating groups for our audience list on MailChimp then how to create the conditional emails and target um, our customers and our subscribers on our website so like I said this video is going to be an in-depth video explaining to you everything you need to know and understand about setting up a conditional my tag integrating mainstream with your website and making sure your conversion rate increase if not times 10 at least times 2 so let's get started into uh, into the video and uh before we proceed further i also made i also let want you to know that uh you can use this timestamp in the description of the video to switch maybe you want to fast forward the video you want to move to any section of the video so you can use the timestamp below so that you can quickly move or jump to any section you like to watch to get a domain name for your website so there are a lot of different platforms or various platforms which you can use but the popular one is godaddy some of us are familiar with that we have we also have namechimp which i normally make use of and which we are going to make use of in this video in this tutorial so you can either you can decide to depending on your choice you can go for good idea or you can go for namechimp and uh you can also make use of namechimp domain as well so namechimp also have domain available so if you want to buy domain you can also make use of namechimp as well but preferable we are going to or let me say in this tutorial we are going to make use of namechimp to get our domain so if you want to buy a domain just come here you will type in the domain name which you want to buy maybe you want to buy uh freddia store then you can click on the search button to show if that domain name has not yet been taken so if it's available you are going to see it pop up and you will be asked to make payment you see the price and if it's so this is available and if i want to buy this domain it's going to cost me 9.58 dollar per year but let's check on this is on name team let's check the price on good idea so let's see how much good idea we said to make to me so you can see it's quite cheap on or cheap on good idea 4.83 dollars for the first year but after the first year i'm going to be paying 19.99 dollar but name chimp on name chimp i will only be paying 9.58 dollar every year so 
I think for me personally, I would prefer going for name team. But you can decide to go for maybe you are just testing or working. You want to use and dispose the the domain. You can make use of GoDaddy. So this is how you can get your domain, and this is how you can buy a domain for your for your website. So if you plan to start up an e-commerce website or any business website website, you uh you can actually decide you can decide to make use of any of these two platforms they are very very good tested and trusted and it's popularly used by most uh advanced websites as well most especially good at it and name chip so once you have your domain ready the next thing is for you to get an hosting so there are different hosting which you can buy depending on how complex or the size or what you want to use the website for so but if you are just getting started you can go for shared hosting or reseller hosting or wordpress hosting so there are lots of there are various hosting providers here which you can go for and uh so the main the main importance of buying hosting is hosting give us access to to server to to host our website our website data database and files so and it makes it accessible for everyone it makes our website and our domain accessible so without a uh, an hosting server there is no way our website is going to be up and running so which is why you need to get an hosting so you can also go uh, buy hosting on GoDaddy as well so GoDaddy also offer hosting so immediately you have you purchase your domain name but you need to create an account with them so this, these are the hosting package plan you can check it out uh, it's just one click setup and then after you you buy or purchase the hosting then you will need to connect it with your domain so as you can see here i have this domain name for instance and i connected it the hosting with my domain name so it's very easy to do and if you have any question relating to this you can leave it in the comment section and i will respond to you or if you have any issue with it setting up ssl is very important to make sure or to ensure your website files and database is secure so if you're not familiar with ssl ssl is secure lock that is available on our website so something like this when you check your browser you are going to see a lock on every domain name which or any website which you visit so any website that is showing the lock that means the website is secure so most of the time when you purchase after buying your domain and hosting so some platforms we offer you free SSL certificate like Namecheap so if you go for a reseller hosting or shared hosting you have access to one year free SSL certificate which you can install on your domain name so I'm going to show you guys how to do that now how to install the SSL so I'm going to log in to my cPanel So here is my cPanel dashboard on Namecheap and here on your cPanel you are going to see a lot of things so this is this is where this is what we call hosting so when you purchase an hosting your cPanel should look something like this 
Now to install SSL, click on name Chimp SSL here. And here we are going to see all our installed SSL certificates on our domain name. And now you can see here that there are lots of there are lots of uh, certificates here available for me to install on my domain. But if I click on, you can click on install via SSL, uh, via Namecheap SSL here. Now you can see all the active SSLs available. So you can see it here. And I can turn it off and I can remove it. I can uninstall it. So this is how you can install it. But now, to give us an example, I'm going to create a domain name now, a subdomain that we're going to use in this tutorial. So to create a subdomain, a subdomain on your name team. So go to domain here and then click on subdomains. Now I'm going to make use of my personal website here and so so as my subdomain will be fredia dot this domain name i will be dot info so i will be dot info is the primary domain name so what you need to understand is if you are just getting started with hosting with domain names once you have a domain name like the domain name which we try to buy earlier which is fredia.com that is the primary domain you can call it a parent a parent domain name but after you if, if you have a primary domain name you can have access most platform will give you access to create a subdomain so that's going to be like a child child domain so like this now is going to be a child domain under this primary domain so I'll click on create now and I'm uh Namechimp is going to create and set up a subdomain name for me. So I don't have to go and buy another domain name to uh, build this website which I'm going to use in this tutorial. So now you can see I've already my website is create is created now and I can visit it. So let's check the website. So you can check it and now you can see the website is created but it's not active and it's not yet on it. It's showing insecure because we've not installed SSL yet. So now let's install the SSL. So just go back. Let's go back to our cPanel. And so you click on name chimp SSL. Then click on install via name chimp SSL again. So it's going to show the can you, you can see the the new subdomain which i create and down is showing the installation is in progress so it will take like 25 minutes for the installation to be complete but i can also click on synchronize here to synchronize it and so you just have to wait so once the the ssl is complete uh is fully installed then it's going to be a uh, website is going to be up and running and then the secure lock is going to be available for everyone to see let's talk about choosing a, a business niche for your website so uh before you even start thinking of creating a website uh, or starting a business any business online it's advisable to first think of what business niche do you have to go for
The next thing is to install WordPress and set up the WordPress on our domain. So from this software app installer, you should be able to find it in any of your hosting provider. Click on the WordPress, the other softwares which you can install. Then click on install now. Here you can select the website which or the domain which you want to install. And we are installing the latest version of WordPress, which is 6.1.1. Then I'm going to name my website Fredia. Then give it a description. Choose a username and uh, choose a password. So I'm going to use Fredia Atlantic Creator. I'm changing this to Freddy as well. Then scroll down and then click on install. Oops. Four five. So the WordPress is installing now to take a few seconds. Now we've successfully installed WordPress on our domain. So if you check and access, and now the next thing is for us to start customizing our website, our store. Now the next step is for us to install the theme on our website, which are going to use to customize our WordPress website. But to get team, we can make use of platforms like TeamForest, uh, TeamForest.com to buy or purchase a premium team. But most of these things will cost you hundreds of dollars and to make purchase. But there is a free website which you can actually uh, find premium teams and install it for free. For the purpose of this video, I've decided to use this team, Razi team to customize our WooCommerce website. So uh, just go to sortfinitry.com to search for available premium teams and plugins which you can use and then you can download and install it on uh, on your website as well. So I already have the download set up. Now to install WordPress team, click on appearance then click on teams. Click on Add New Team. Then click on Upload Team. So click on Choose File. And this is my unzip team file. Then this team is having two, both the parent and the child. So I'm going to install the child first. And click on install now. So after the child has been installed, then we have to install the parent team. Now the the, the child team has is installed now, but you can see here is telling us that the parent team cannot be found. So you have to go back to the team page again to install the parent team. So click on add new team, upload team, choose file, and we install the parent team. Install now. Now both the child and the parent team is installed successfully. Now the next thing is to activate. So 
we click on activate then our team is successfully activated now to check let's check our website So right now you can see the team is installed rising and uh, the next thing for us to set up and install and customize our website so now going back to our team so sometimes things will come with some pre-installed uh, some uh, premium plugins or some add-on plugins which you have to install so now you can see here it showing us that the team requires the following plugins to work to be to work actively or to be active on our website. So let's click on begin installing plugins. So these are the plugins, recommended plugins from this team. So I'm going to install everything. So this is going to take a while so once the installation is complete then we can activate the plugins so the installation is is going on right now so now all these all the plugins are successfully installed the next thing is for us to activate the plugins so we can click on Return to require plugin installer. I click everything again, then click on activate. So click on apply. Now all our plugins is installed and successfully activated. So to confirm and to check, I can click on install plugins here. So this is the page builder which comes with the plugin which is Elementor. So let's skip this. So Elementor, for some of us who don't know, Elementor is a page builder, a popular page builder which is mostly or widely used by most WordPress websites. So this team is actually making use of Elementor page builder. So this is how Elementor page builder looks like. So I'm going to go more into detail. So I'm going to exit this page, decide later. And let's go back to our dashboard. Now, these are all the, uh, the installed uh, pages that comes with the template with the teams or uh, rising team which we installed earlier the card page checkout WooCommerce so these are all from WooCommerce so the rising teams comes with the WooCommerce plugin installed so WooCommerce is the WooCommerce is a plugin that allow us to set up an e-commerce functionality on our WordPress website so it's popularly used by most WordPress e-commerce websites. There are other plugins which you can use, but WordPress is like the leading plugin which is widely used by most websites, most WordPress websites online. So which is why we are going to use WooCommerce to set up our e-commerce websites in this tutorial. Now, there are, there are some add-ons plugins that comes with our teams most of the time. So whenever you download any premium uh, WordPress team on sortfinity.com, a lot of time there are premium or add-on teams which comes along with it. So let me show us what I'm saying here. Here you can see these are some, this is the template, our team file. 
and the open the plugins page here are some add-on plugins which come with it so we need to install these plugins as well to make our website fully functional so to do that i'm going to go back here and click on add new other plugins then click on upload plugin so you have to install those plugins one after the other so i'm going to install this first install now then uh, i'm going to replace current with uploaded yes so i'm going to replace it with the current then return to plugin installer click on upload plugin again choose file so i'm going to install the revolutionary slider install now then click on activate plugin so now. now the next thing is to install the third plugin so i'm going to click on plugins add new plugin here click on upload plugin choose file then install the third plugin which is the demo importer so this demo importer is going to give us access to import some templates which you can use on our website now we've successfully installed all the three plugins and now we are good to go one thing i would like to make mention of here is that anytime you are setting up a wordpress website make sure that you are very careful of the plugins which you are which you'll be installing on your website because a lot of time it might happen to install some some plugins which will eventually slow down your website or uh, cause issues on your website which is why you have to be very very careful before you install any plugin probably want to install plugin on directly from wordpress wordpress uh marketplace like this so i will advise you check the number of ra the ratings of the plugins like this classic editor is a popular plugin which i'm actually going to install as well so check the ratings the number of active installation you can see this plug is having over 5 million plus active installation same thing for akismet uh, spam protection you check the ratings check the number of installation so that you can be sure check the last updated as well can see this plugin is is last updated 14 hours ago and this classic editor is currently is uh, last updated two months ago which means that there are there are people supporting these plugins and there are child developers who are who keeps working on the plugin to make sure it's working perfectly so with that you can know that your website will be secure and it's going to be safe and you are not going to have issues like loading speeds and others on your website so you have to be very very careful now the next thing is for us to install templates and customize our website now checking checking uh through our, our templates which is our team templates you can see the template comes with uh some elemental premium templates here so we open it you can see these are some templates which you can use okay so to import our template now we click on appearance here import demo data so let's check here now these are the templates which comes with the razi team so uh, let's see which one we can install and customize for the purpose of this tutorial so remember we are setting up our e-commerce and uh, an e-commerce website so i think it, this looks good so let's choose this uh these accessories those accessories then click on import 
So now, right now, you're downloading the content, it's importing the products and everything, the media. So we need to we need to give it some time for the demo template to import on our website. Right now, our website is not showing anything, but we know that the thing is currently installed. But we should not import or add any templates yet. So that is why showing this blank, the default for the full commerce functionalities and everything is working. You can see it's working. So right now, what we are doing is importing the demo template and actually see if this is going to work perfectly or suit to what we are trying to achieve in this tutorial. So right now our demo template importation is complete. So let's check our website and let's see if it's working. So boom, uh, a template is successfully installed. Wow, template is successfully installed and our, uh, our website is ready to go. So you can see this makes a lot of sense within few seconds or few minutes rather you can set up customize the website uh, build the website from scratch with wordpress uh, premium template from source finitry so right now it's loading the product we have the product here we have uh, the categories as well we have the pages we have the categories audio and see this makes sense users can also filter the categories here as well so this makes sense this makes sense to me this make a lot of sense so there are pages we have the about us page we have the about us page here yes we have the about us page here so um then have the FAQs, have FAQs, yeah. So frequently asked question. So you don't even have to. Even if you are a novice or you've not set up a website before, this 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 is something you can actually work on and learn. So shipping policy, we have the shipping policy here. We have the return policy as well. We also have the contact us. If users want to contact the store owner and give us a call, write us a message, or add our address here. There's also a blog page as well. Wow. So I think this this is a this this team is a is a is a very nice team. These are the categories, all this you can edit with change make changes to it, and users can come here and add the contact they can check their dashboard check orders number of orders they placed uh yeah downloads and others you can add their address as well so this this is what we are going to customize and this is how our website is going to look like so uh the next thing for us to is to customize the website and then set up the uh the the drop shipping uh product from my express add it to our website and then uh continue from there so if you are just getting started with website designing and development uh one thing you must you must understand or which you have to understand is that websites are subdivided into different different sections so here now for for instance this website what i'm trying to say here is like most websites you have an, uh, a menu bar so this is what we call a menu home shop blog page features these are all menus shop shipping faq and contact these are p headers these are p headers now this is also this is also a menu, but this is called an hamburger menu. 
then this is a search bar for, for an e-commerce website most e-commerce websites will have a search bar for users to be able to filter to search for a specific product or services which they need then the logo will be here so this is the logo we are going to make changes to that then this is the slider the next section is the slider this is the slider revolution so users can click here or sometimes the slider we can set it to auto scroll itself or to slide itself so uh based on the number of circles we we choose maybe five seconds ten seconds the slider will automatically slide and show us a new image then here we have the product categories we have the iphone apple watch ipad we have the recommended item this is another section so all these are called bodies all these are called bodies they are called products or you can also call them uh the product page sections then here we have banners as well then we have featured products mobile phones iphones and all that then at the end we have the footer session so the footer session we have some links like most are the like the uh secondary links the primary links will be added on the heading here to the menu bar here but the secondary links like the shipping policy the return policy terms of condition the privacy policy our contact information all this needs to be added in or included in our footer section so all this you have to understand if you want to build a professional website most especially an e-commerce website so you can see here that the contact search their contact information is not included in the head in the menu bar we only include a contact button here but we don't add our phone number is uh our phone number email address here so because all these are just secondary links and most times secondary links are added in uh, the footer section of the website so you have to take this and you have to understand this as well so to get started with our customization we start from the basic uh which is customizing our footer section so how can you customize your footer section on uh, a wordpress website so let's go back to our dashboard to customize the footer section you need to click on go to this appearance and click on widget so widget this with anything pertaining to footer anything pertaining to sidebar we also sometimes you have a website that are a sidebar so like this all these here are sidebars this is what we call sidebar this is a left sidebar and sometimes you see some websites have a right sidebar so all this you need to understand for you to build a professional e-commerce website so let's go back to our dashboard and let's check the social the costume tma and then the rising social links which is this the rising social links facebook twitter google and tick is third or the fourth link so you click here now you can see these are the links the social media links on our website so here we can add our website link, our Facebook profile link. So, but we don't have one yet. So we just add facebook.com slash Fredia, Fredia store, Fredia store. Then a Google Plus, I'm not going to add that. LinkedIn, Flickr, GitHub. Um, let's add WhatsApp. We we'll use Ash. Let's add a Telegram. For instance, assuming we have one, Fredia store, uh, Instagram, Instagram.com slash Fredia store. So now we can update our changes here so let's 
you know the website and let's check the chain let's check the changes now you can see the telegram the instagram and the whatsapp are showing right now so this is how you can make changes now the razi we don't have a logo right now so we don't have a logo right now but to change make changes to the logo you can do that here um let's check that uh that is going to be in this uh, i'm going to show you how to change make changes to the logo but now to customize the support which is already support to have a contact us page faq store location and shipping and returns so if you want to make changes to that just come here you can see this is it so you can click on it then the footer menu set support now here this is the way the menu works so to get the menu so you open let's check this menu section uh, section here so under this menu now uh we have different menus that came with this uh razi thing so this is it so this is the primary menu this is the primary menu which is showing us here so if i change it to the primary menu and click on select now you are going to see this home shop blog page features so that's what it should show us it's going to show us here you can see showing us the home the shop and others now uh notice one thing here on that when i over my mouse to on this home uh, home menu now it draws down and show other sub menus. These are called sub menus. I call them secondary menus or a child menu rather. So the way you set that up is you you are going to drag it. Now if I should drag this home v1 minima, if I should drag it here. Um or let me use an, another example so let me add i'm going to add a new menu here so let me add um, let's use this as an example home page home 19 and blog so i'm going to add it to this menu so it's going to show here yes Okay, so this is it. Now let's save the menu and let's see how it's going to look like on our how it's going to show on our website. So I'm going to reload this. And let's check. Now you can see the new menu is added right now the home and the blog but if you want you want to uh put this blog menu under this home 19 so this is how you are going to do it you will drag this block and drag it to the right under the home 19 now so what this means is that this block is under this home 19 so let's save changes and let's let's save our menu and let's Reload our website. So I'm going to reload the website now to see. Now you can see the block 19 is no more showing right now. But if we show over our mouse to this home 19, you can see the block menu drop down. So this is how you can create uh put or uh, can create a parent and a child menu. And add them together you can add a lot of pages custom links post links like uh 50 30 100 in a single menu section all you just have to do is align them together create decide which one is going to be the parent menu and which one is going to be the child menu link so that is the way it works. So now going back to customizing our footer section here. So this is 
the footer section here is making use of the footer menu support so going back to our menu page we have to switch it to the footer menu support here and then click on select now you can see the four pages which is the four links which is showing on the contact faq store location and shipping and reports so if i want to add a new custom link here so let's say i want to add the blog or about us um, yeah let's add blog add to menu so i can drag it up to the top and then click on save menu so let's reload our website and let's check if the blog is going to show here now you can see it's showing the blog and if user click on the blog they click on the blog page blog link here is going to take them to the blog so you can see here right now that uh is actually working and this is how you can set up your footer so the same thing goes for the shop so this is the footer tree so under this footer tree we have the shop so this is footer one footer two footer three footer four and footer five so that's the way it's set up so you should be able to do that so if you have any question you can leave it in the comment section let me know so i'll respond to you so these are to customize a footer session on your website now the next thing which i'm going to talk about is setting up your category section here before we start importing products from aliexpress so how can you set up your categories here or how to set up a category on a woocommerce wordpress website so to do that go back to our dashboard and then under your woocommerce section here you see product so the woocommerce and the product plugin uh it comes together so under this product you see the you find the categories here so as you click on categories it's going to show all the categories which we have right now the audio and speakers cameras iphone and tablet laptops and others so this is it we have the audio camera ipads and this but now you should note you should notice something here that this category is showing dash bits so what this means is that this is a subcategory under uh under the audio and speakers now you can see under the cameras and camcorders we also have a dash cameras so this is a subcategory under the cameras and camcorders so the way it works is this is the parent category and this is the child category so this is the parent category and this is also the child category but this is the parent category this is not having this laptop and macbook is not having any child category so to create a new category this is where you create a new category so let's use one as an example let's say we want to create a category for computers so the parent category so this log so slug is what is going to be the url of the category that you are creating so this is the parent category choose it as log then click on add new category so here if you check here it's going to show this is our new category which we create now if i want to create a child category under this computer i can create something like um, imac then as lock i mark then the parent category here we can now select computer and add new category so the i mark is going to show under this computer so now right now you can see that it's showing so to delete a category right now you just click on the computer and then click on delete so this is how you delete a parent category and the same thing applicable for the child category as well. So this is how to create a product category for a WooCommerce website. Now you can also set up tags to use. 
So um, if you click on tax here, now these are the current tax that comes with the RASI team, the Android, iOS, and Windows. So the, you, if you are just getting started with setting up an e-commerce or e-commerce website, now you might be thinking of why do we need to set up the categories and tags? Same thing applicable to brands. So why do we need all this? Or what are the differences between the categories, the tags, and brands? Well, the, the major reason why we need to set everything up is number one for users to be able to filter what product they want to buy so if a user comes to our website if you, a user need a laptop and man boots so they can easily filter products that relate or that uh, that is based on laptops and man boots so the our website is going to filter it down to them and then it's going to show products relating to laptops and marbles now for the tags the main function of this tag here main function of this tag here is to allow us to categorize our products so when we start adding products manually uh as we are setting up a manual product you will need to add tags to each to every product you are adding on your website so to add a product manually, so you need to click on product here, then click on add new product. So when you click on add new product, now we can choose a product name. So product name, let's call it uh, iMac. So let's call it iMac. Let's search for description so we are just using this as an example I'm going to delete the product uh, so mind you when we publish this product the name of our of this product will be the permanent link or the URL of the product including our domain name our website URL so um, now this is where you, this one where I'm trying to uh, what I'm trying to explain here so the categories when anytime you add a product a new product manually on your website so we need to select the category that this product falls under so here now the category will be laptops and MacBooks, and then the product tag is what you are going to use to categorize our products together now stop so and then the product tags will also allow seo visibility on our products on search engine platforms like google like linkedin uh um uh, things and others so here we can add tags like imac we can add tasks like macbook we can add tasks like apple laptop and others so this is actually going to help with categories our uh, categorize our product and at the same time, when users search for pro, for iMacs or Apple laptops on our store, it's actually going to bring out uh, this product. Now, the brands is the brand of products we have on our website. So the brand here is Apple. So just select Apple, and then here you see if uh, the product is a simple product, which is a physical product, we are going to leave this as default. But assuming you are you are adding uh, a digital product, a downloadable files, resources, PDF, uh, you need to choose a downloadable product here. So that means uh, you will not have to take care or worry about shipping those products to your customer. But this is a physical product, so you are going to leave that as default, and then here you can select add a price here yeah, nine and ninety nine and nine. So the regular price and the sales price so the difference between the regular price and sales price is simple the sales price is the current price which we are selling the product on our website but the regular price is the average price people sell it in the market so which means that the sales price has to be lower than 
irregular price so it's one of the strategies that is used in uh, setting up a professional e-commerce website so here we can reduce it to 888.88 us dollars then I add other short product description here I use the same thing I just probably use this as short description and let's add the product image so I'm going to download this I'm going to save this and um, so let's add our product image so to add your product image to set product image here so I upload it and click on set product image then other product images other images of the product here you add it to the product gallery then click on publish so this is how to add a manual product to your website so let's check our website and let's check the product here So right now you can see uh this is our product and this is the name this is the short description this is the description of our product and the users can select the item the categories is all uh, it's also showing um, the tags so they can favorite and they can add to cart so these are to add product manually but um the only issue with manual product is like this is it's actually going to take a lot of time imagine you want to uh, on our website we uh, uh, we are planning to add like 10,000 products on our website on our store imagine the number of times the number of our days that is going to take us for us to be able to add this product manually on our store so there is another myth means if you are planning to set up a manual product or i product personally on your website you can import those products so there is a woocommerce functionality called importation now the next thing is to import products from aliexpress to set up a drop shipping store so this is aliexpress and the plugin which you are going to use is uh this we can there are other plugins which you can use uh so just click on add new plugin and search for aliexpress and you'll be able to see different types of plugins which you can use but for the sake of this video uh we're going to install this plugin or we can use this as well so um uh, let's install this so click on install now so let's wait for the installation to be complete and after that we're going to activate the plugin so we click on activate So the activation is complete. So right now, just click on. We can install this Chrome extension. So let's try to install the Chrome extension. So click on now to Chrome. Add extension. So right now what I'm going to do is pin the the extension so I'm going to pin it so this is the plugin so I'm going to pin it so now I can go back to our dashboard and click on connect the extension so connect the extension uh, then click on next So I will advise you leave all these as as default. So just click on next. Then uh, 
we don't need all this so we can just keep it now these are some recommended uh, plugins for that comes with the plugin but for now we are not going to install it all we need is to import product from aliexpress so that's what we are trying to achieve right now so let's go to import list connect the extension so let's click on connect the extension then click on approve so right right now uh we've so we, we've just connected with our aliexpress account so you, if you don't have an account on aliexpress you need to create an account first before you'll be able to import products now let's click on import aliexpress product so with the help of help of our plugin which we installed earlier we'll be able to access and store our uh, import products directly from aliexpress to our WooCommerce website so this is our plugin so we can click on it now you can see our store is successfully connected and so we just click on save and let's try to import one or two products so let's filter it to computer or phones android phones So right now you can click on plus and the product is going to synchronize and add it to our store. So it's just going to be a one click importation. So you can see here the product is added. We are importing the products one after the other. So click on plus, 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 plus. So you can see how it, how easy it is to set up a dropshipping website or on WordPress. So you can add as many products as you want, as much as possible. So if we go back to our store right now. Let's click on products. Now. The products we start adding to our store. So you can see right now the product is uh, adding. Let's go back to import list. So I'm not sure if the product is successfully added to our product page yet. So it's here. So these are the products which we just import. Now let's click on here. Let's click here and then click on import all. So click on OK. So now it's going to uh, the plugin, the, the dropship AliExpress plugin is going to synchronize those products and add it directly to our to our website products. So I'm going to open this in a new tab and let's check. So now we can view the product here. Let's view it directly. So this is our product page and now the first product is added successfully. And let's check the products which we just add right now. Now you can see this product is added. Uh, the Android smartphone, we have the option. We have the product description here in detail so you can see how easy it is to set up a an e-commerce dropshipping website on wordpress using aliexpress so you can see the product user can click on it and zoom in to into the product the product images and galleries are also added you can choose options and everything so you can add as many products as possible on your store. So this is how to add products 
directly from Ani Express to your WooCommerce website. Now, the next thing which we have to do is to integrate our MailChimp account with uh, our WooCommerce dropshipping store. So to do that, you need to add a new plugin. So we need to install MailChimp plugin. So go to plugin, click on add new. Then from here, search for MailChimp. So this is the plugin which we need to install, mention for WooCommerce. So click on install now. And after that, you are going to activate it. But right now, you must make sure that your mention account is uh, is ready. So if you don't have an account with mention you can just go to mention.com and sign up and create an account. So you can get started with the free plan and as time goes on, you can decide to upgrade to their premium or standard package plan. So then we click on activate. So I'm trying to access my main chain account. Okay, so right now this is my main chain account. So now the next thing is to have, we need to create an audience. So audience is is a list that that uh, we create tailored or personalized based on different businesses we are managing on our main chip account. So what this means is that you can have different businesses which you are managing. Maybe you have a restaurant business, you have uh, a, a an e-commerce or dropshipping store like this which you just set up. Maybe you are you are uh, you are into another form of business, fashion business. You can have different kind of businesses and use one main chain account to manage it. So you click on login, then click on allow. So right now. Uh, I've connected my I've connected my account successfully. So click on next step. Then here you need to select the audience list which you want to connect to. And uh, to create the match tag, a custom match tag. This is where we can create a consumer match tag. So all you need to do is to click on add a feed. So these are some consumer match tag which you can create in mention. We have a test, we have number, we have radio buttons, we have drop down, we have date, we have by day, address, zip code, phone number, website and image. So but for the purpose of this video, we'll be making use of only language option so for us to create a multilingual email marketing campaign to target our customers based on their choice of language so this is where we create it if i want to delete or if you want to delete a match tag click on this uh, trash icon and then write delete So right now the math tag is no longer available. So to add it back, just click on add a feed and then I'm going to choose um, radio button. So radio button will allow users to select only one option. So click on radio button. So right now, uh, I can 
create a consumer tab for language choose your language option then the first choice let's make it Italian the second choice let's make it German the third choice let's make it um, Dutch then click on save changes next thing is for us to add uh, a form page that will be linked directly to our website so you, our customers can subscribe to uh, they can actually subscribe to our to our campaign or to our audience list so there are two methods or several methods which we can use here but basically i'll be showing you us one or two methods for us to collect our customer data directly from our e-commerce store so to do that all you have to do is click on so we can click on subscriber preferences here so click on sign up form here so these are the form integration method which we can use we can use the form builder we can use the embedded form method subscriber pop-up contact form or form integration so but for the purpose of this video i'll be making use of the embedded form so right now we have the email address phone number and first name so i'm going to add the language option so right now you can see choose your language option is also available as a form feed so i can include it and it's going to be added so right now you can see choose your language option so users will be able to select either italian German, or dutch on our website then uh i'm going to remove the phone number or let's let's leave the phone number as well then click on continue so this is the code which you need to use to embed on our website so all you have to do is copy this code so you are going to go to edit with elementor here so click on edit with elementor and then this is our elementor home page design so right now we can add or embed the form page directly here so we can include it at the footer section here so to do that all we have to do is click on this plus so uh click on this plus icon then click on plus so we add it in one section then the, we search for html html element and then drag it inside so we are going to paste the code from main chain paste it directly here now you can see it showing our form page right now so uh so this is how it's going to look like on our website but to make it more more professional let's let's centralize it so to do that we are going to add three section here and then drag copy and paste it here then we can delete or remove this and now drag this and drag this like this so it's going to be at the center so let's drag it to the right a bit so i think this this makes sense and then click on update so we can actually use the other method as well we can use this uh the pop-up pop-up method uh, so the pop-up method is going to so let's let's finish later here so we can use other method uh, the form builder but this form builder is going to actually give us a link to add as a button on our website so if you are using form builder that means mainship is going to give you a link a unique link to integrate the form page on our website so here we can actually customize and design it so the first name last email address and phone number then choose 
your language. So you guys will be able to select one option on our website because of the radio button which we use. Um, so right now our form page is integrated. So let's reload our website and let's check if the form page is active. So let's scroll down. So right now you can see the form page is working and I can input my email address here, my phone number, then my first name here, then I can select my language as Italian, then click on subscribe. So thank you for subscribing. So let's go back to our so I a customer or one let's assume I'm a customer that comes to the website and right now I've successfully subscribed to this form page. Now let's check our audience link list on our audience list dashboard. So we should be able to see the new audience that signed up on our website. So right now you can see this is my data this is my email my first name my phone number and this is my choice of language so uh this is the, was the source of uh sign up or getting uh, uh this this customer getting into this audience list is through embedded form then this is the date and then this is the last change and time so you can see here with this we can actually uh, us knowing or as a as a as a WooCommerce expert or as a, an email marketing expert right now, with us gathering this information from our customers, knowing their choice of language, we can actually use this to create a targeted campaign to them based on their preferred choice of language. So as we on our WooCommerce website, as time goes on, we have uh one thousand audience or customers that sign up through our form page here yeah? and um, let's say 500 of them choose Italia as their language 200 choose German and 300 choose Dutch so that means we can create a, ta a targeted campaign uh, written in Italian written another one written in German and another email campaign written in uh, Dutch and with that, we can get more conversion rates on our store. So I think we are getting the idea of how everything works right now. Main importance also has a feature which we, which is called group. So what this means is that we can group our customers based on different uh, scenario or based on what if whatever category that it falls into so for instance on our website on our store we can have some customers we can group our customers in different categories we can categorize them based on those who have purchased any item related to audio and speakers we can group our customers as uh, so other customers in other cameras and camcorders other customers uh, in iPad and tablet and so on and so forth. We can group our customers based on age range So probably from age maybe we want to group our customers from age 18 to 25 another group from 26 to 35 and another group from 36 and above That is and you can you can create a group for them as well. So there are different means or different method which you can uh, depending on the kind of goal which you want to achieve in your marketing campaign so to do that i uh, come back to your main account and then click on subscriber preferences so under the subscriber preferences we'll be able to add groups to our forms so as you can see here add groups to more direct to get more direct information how your customers want to hear from you so we can also click on other manage contacts and click on groups here so now we can click on add groups to forms so here now we can click on create groups 
So groups let you organize, categorize subscribers by things like interests and preferences. So subscribers can select groups for themselves or you can put subscribers into groups within MailChimp. So here we can click on create group and how would you like to, how would, should we show group options for your sign up? So you can set it as check boxes. So if you set it as check boxes, that means users will be able to select one or two or more than one groups that they want to fall into. Or if they are using radio button, that means they can only select one group at a time. Then we also have drop down and others. So we can set it as radio button. And here we can actually create groups probably based on uh, their age. So let's say what is your age range. So 18 below. 18 to 25 years so 18 years below then 26 years plus then click on save so right now we successfully create our main team group for our audience list and then we can click on done for now So this is how to create this is how to create uh so you can click on view groups here and now we can see this our uh, information so right now what we can do is segment our uh or categorize our customers as time goes on when we start having audience or customers on our store we can categorize them base or group them in separate groups so the the campaign which you are going to send out to uh to customers who are below 18 years old will be different uh to the campaign which you are going to send out to 18 years to 25 years and the campaign of 26 years old plus will be different from others so with this, we can get more conversion rates and increase and time our uh, our sales on our on our store on our WooCommerce store. So I hope this makes a lot of sense right now, and I believe you are getting how everything works together. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click on the notification bell so you get notified anytime I publish new videos. Now to create a conditional email targeting our customers based on the groups and based on uh, based on the tags and groups which they fall into. So following this documentation from MailChimp based on our last video. So right now what we can do here on our audience list we can actually click on um, create campaign. So I'm going to click on create campaign to show us how everything work. But right now we need to, uh, in order to ensure that things uh, works perfectly based on what I'm going to show you guys. So we are going to create another match tag for this. So considering this example here, uh, this campaign is showing us, telling us that we want to send out a targeted campaign to our customers who are greater than or equal to 21 years that means that we want to send out campaigns to customers starting from who uh, that their age starts from 21 years so to do that we need to first get their age range that means that on our audience list there should be a match tax that enable us to get something like their date of birth so us having their date of birth information with us main team will be able to know how many customers on our audience list is uh, 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 currently greater than 21 years old and then with that we'll be able to send them a targeted campaign so to do that let's go back to uh, 
our match tags audience feed our match tag and then we are going to create a new match tag so we add a feed and then here we are going to get their body information so right now here we can ask what is your date of birth so this is also going to be required and you can get their date and month then click on save changes so right now our math tag is we've created our math tag so the next thing is for us to create a campaign so click on create campaign then click on email let's choose a regular email so fredia so let's name our campaign fredia multi match tag email then click on begin So right now let's check our website again. Let's see if the date of birth um my tag is actually working. So let's reload it and let's check. So it seems our date of birth is actually not working right now. So to do that, we need to go back to our audience. On our form page so let's go back to our form page click on embedded form so we need to get a new embedded form link so uh, click on form feed so what is your date of birth so this this was the groups which we created the other time so what is your age so we can use the group here so what is your age range or what is your date of birth so can you see the difference now to create the math tag you can make use of either the group or the uh the audience math tag itself so this one i'm saying now remember we created this group earlier and we asked for the age range of our customers so with this we can include the group Costume my tag, we can actually include it and add it on our main team sign up form page here. So, as you can see here, it is showing, or we can make use of this uh, costume my tag directly from our audience list and then also include it on or embed it on our form page. So both is actually going to give us the same result at the end of the day. So let's make use of the group here and click on continue. So let's copy the code, go back to our, our elemental design. So this is our elemental design here. So I'm going to delete this code and paste in the new code here. So the rate range is showing right now then click on update so let's load our website and let's check if it's working so right now it's working so user can actually add fill in their email their phone number uh, their first name you can choose their language I'm going to choose German this time around and their age range 18 to 25 then click on subscribe so now let's go back to our audience list and remember we we use the group uh, age range here so right now if we reload this group the new audience or the new customer that signed up right now will be under will be categorized in the group 
that we that uh the user or the customer selected so if we click on view group so right now you can see 18 to 25 is having one contact so if we click on the one contact here we can see the information the customer information now you can see the first name is say german 18 to 25 and then the subscriber sign up through embedded embed form so i think this is actually making sense to you right now so now we can use this to create a a, a uh an email marketing multilingual campaign that will be targeted based on their age you can create it that based on their language which is be a multilingual campaign and considering any factors whatsoever so now what we do right now is click on design email then uh, let's choose the classic builder then I'm going to I'm going to choose one column here I'm going to choose one column and right now we can actually create a campaign so I'm going to delete this and so let's say welcome to Fredia store welcome to Fredia store so now what we can do to um we want to personalize this campaign so for instance we want to personalize this campaign so what we can do here right now is to get the match tag code and embed or insert it here in our campaign so going back so go back to the audience feed and match tag so right now we want to we want to personalize our campaign to include our customer first name so anytime they sign up they should receive welcome to Fredia store victor welcome to Fredia store see ya. so this is how we're going to do that copy this match uh matter code so this matter code is only for the first name then this is for the email you want to include the email you can either use this or this you can also use this as well or we can use this so but i'm going to use this right now copy it and then come here and paste it here so click on save and close so let's preview our campaign enter preview mode then let's enable live match tag info so right now uh the issue we are having right now is none of our can, uh, audience list is synchronizing so um, to do that I'm going to I, I think I made a mistake so I need to select the audience audience feed uh, the audience list so I forgot to do that so let's continue So who are you sending this campaign? Add recipient. So let's click on add recipient here. And let's choose our Fredia store. So this audience list is going to synchronize uh, with our campaign. So click on personalize to feed. And then we can also select the mark tag. But right now I'm not going to select this. Click on save. Then let's go back to our campaign.
So let's enter the preview mode again. Then let's enable my tag. So right now you can see welcome to Freddy store. Say yeah. So that is the second, the uh, last customer that subscribed. So and this is the email. So and if we change it to another email, now you can see it's changed automatically, make it automatically change it based on the math tag which we added. So if we have hundreds or thousands of customers on our audience list and we have their first name contact info uh information in our audience list, make sure we automatically match the tags of each customer's first name directly to their uh, to their campaign before the message enters into their inbox or spam box. So that's the way it will work. So um, I think this is actually making sense right now. So now we are understanding this, we can actually make use of this and also get, uh, we can actually target customers based on their phone number at the same time. So since we have their phone number match tag, we can copy that and let's edit our campaign. So I'm going to remove all this. Let's say, uh, let's write something like, is your phone number, we believe your phone number, so we believe your phone number is match that theory. Then we can include the match that one, which is uh, the first name, because of our first name. So I copy this and then paste it here. Can you see? Then we add a question mark. So what this is going to do is, it's going to write, change it to we believe your phone number is the customer first name, uh, the customer phone number, then the customer first name, followed by question mark. So let's save and close and let's enter preview mode. So let's test our campaign. So right now you can see it's actually working. We believe your phone number is blah, 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 say. So if we change it to the uh, second customer, which we have on our, on our audience list. So can, you can see as well this is working uh, this is also working at the same time. So this is how you can target can your your customers or your uh, your subscribers based on their first name, based on their information which they they are uh, they uh, they added or the input when they are subscribing on our phone page. So right now we can use this to also create a conditional matter statement. So, um, we can create this, something like this. So let's copy this code. So I'm going to explain how it works right now. So I'm going to remove this and paste it here. So now we are creating a conditional, conditional statement here that if the age, if the age of our customer is greater than or equals to 21, They should receive this email. Check out our special deal on wine. If their age is greater than or equals to 21. So now what we can do here is since we are not having uh, we are not having a uh, any any my tax relating to that so what you are going to do is change it to the language option so here now what we can do is we can actually change this to if age so instead of age let's make use of uh, the language option so if my tag 2 which is our language my tag so we can change it here so if match tag two, 
is equals to italian which is this so you make sure that uh you come here to copy it because if uh for instance here we you use the capital letter i for to start our italian and now you come here to put an i used small letter i is actually not going to work so because main key matter is a uh, conditional statement is case sensitive now to create a multilingual campaign to our audience list now we can make use of this quick short code so what this is this statement here is telling us is that if mc language is es so um i'm also going to leave this link in the description of the video so these are main chip source code languages uh which you have to familiarize with you have to know and understand this for this uh multilingual campaign to work so for instance on our audience list uh match tag we if you remember we created three choice of language we have the italian the German, and the dutch so for instance now our first uh customers who uh who selected italian we want to send them italian message so now how can we do that so what we can do here is we can copy the short code so copy it and then we come here and then we paste it here so um uh, if the mc language is italian so italian here is it so this is the short code so just copy this short code and then come here and paste it here so let me zoom in so if the uh language is it which is italian so it stands for it stands for italian then uh they should receive this message we are glad you are italian then we can then s that means that other customers that their choice of language or their preferred choice of language is not italian they are going to receive this message we are glad you are english or you are glad you are not an italian now putting all this together we can actually synchronize our customer information from our woocommerce directly to our main team so remember we've already set up the integration so anytime we have a new customer that purchase any product we are going to find their information here under woocommerce customers and when we go to our main team contact information as well we are going to find that information here under the contact so to practicalize this i'm going to purchase a product so let's so i'm going to purchase a product on my store on our dropshipping store but um i'm going it's going to be a manual product rather than product which i added from my express because i'm going to need a real money to make purchase of that so right now let's choose this so this is currently 320 dollars samsung galaxy so i'm going to edit it and change it to zero dollars the sales price will also be zero so I'm going to leave it as regular price and click on update. So let's purchase the product. Then I'm going to click on add to cart as a customer. Then click on view cart. So I'm going to remove this.
then click on proceed to checkout so here as a customer i'm going to have uh, include all my customer information right now so um my email address then click on place order so right now what is going to happen is that main uh WooCommerce is going to send all the customer information directly to MailChimp since we've already synchronized both our WooCommerce and our MailChimp together. So my, my order is completed right now, it's complete and now if we go back to our WooCommerce here and click on customers, so we should be able to find the new customer information deal so right now it's not showing anything but if we go to others Now you can see here it's showing the uh, recent order which the customer just placed and showing processing. The reason why it's showing processing is because we have not fulfilled this order. So to fulfill the order we need to click on it. And right now what we can do is uh, fulfill it and ship the product or send the product to the customer. But if you are using uh, for dropshipping store products like from AliExpress, you don't have to worry about uh, shipping the product yourself because that is going to be handled by AliExpress. All you need to do is to bring customers to make purchase of product directly through your store. And uh, immediately they buy the product uh, and the product gets fulfilled, you will receive your own percentage as the store owner or as the person that brings customers to purchase the product through aliexpress so that's the way it work so here now i can change the order from so this is the current order so this is the customer information the order id the uh, paid so this is all the information here then we have the other notes so if you want to refund, you can click on refund here and some others. So uh, I'm going to change the status from processing to completed. Then we'll click on update. So right now, uh, the order is marked as completed. So we should be able to find the details of the customer here under the customer section so right now you can see the information is here the name of the the name of the user the time purchase email address the number of items purchased the total spent the country the city the region and everything so all this information is what we can use to create a targeted uh, campaign for our WooCommerce customers so now let's go back to main chain projects and let's reload it so we should be able to find the new customer information here but sometimes it takes it takes a few minutes for the data of those customers to synchronize with your main chain audience so but let's check if the customer new customer information is added 
so right now you, you can see the information is now showing directly on our mainstream audience so that is the function of synchronizing uh method for of of who commands directly with main chip so with this information now we can actually create a uh, a multilingual campaign we can create a transactional emails we can create customer emails that will be targeted based on uh the information we have or information who commands as concerning each and every of the customers that has make purchase of any item or any product on our store so to do that what we have to do here is to create you can create an automation campaign now the next thing which i'm going to do right now is to create a customer journey for all customers on fredia store on our woocommerce dropshipping store so to do that you click on automations under automations click on journeys click on create journey so click on create journey and here we are going to create a conditional emails based on the each users or based on each customers uh, data that we have directly from WooCommerce so I'm going to name my customer uh, my journey Fredia customer journey one and then I'm going to change the audience to Fredia store which you are working with then click on start building so the first thing which you are going to do right now is to create a starting point so the starting point will be for when so as uh, any customer make purchase on our store so that means they sign up so I'm going to include the imported contact here and click on save starting point so that is going to be a starting point anytime uh, someone make purchase of any product on our store so anytime they make purchase and they leave their information on the product page then uh, WooCommerce is going to send their information from main uh, from WordPress directly to MailChimp so that's the way it work now uh, I'm going to add a, a journey point and here are the conditional uh, statement tags which I explained to you the other time in the last video so if you haven't watched the video I will leave the link in the in the description of the video so that you can go back and rewatch uh, the basic theory of how conditional master statements work so we have four different uh, conditional statements which we use in MailChimp we have the if, s, f, if and if not so I actually break everything down and I explain in detail how it will work so you can go back and rewatch the video so now going back to uh, our customer journey so anytime a subscriber or a customer signs up or they make purchase on our store we would like to send them a transactional email we like to welcome first welcome them to our store for making purchase so click on send email and then here from here we can edit we want to send to their email address so we leave this as default the name of the sender which is going to be a website or a WooCommerce store name which is Fredia and then from the email address the sender email address will be testing in a flash mind so we can use a, a domain email so how can you connect your domain email to your audience list so to do that you need to come to settings here and then click on audience name and default so I think I showed you that uh, the other time so this is where we are going to set it so you need to set your default from email address so but for for the sake of this video I'm going to use my personal email which I've already verified and I'm going to use that as my sender IP or sender email address for this audience list I'm going to click on save and continue so right now that is what I'm going to use here as well then the subject that we are going to send used to, uh, that the customers are going to see on the email that we are sending to them the first time they make purchase so you can say thank you 
for your uh welcome to Superior store because even uh WooCommerce itself is going to send them a transactional email so let's just send them welcome to Freddy store so we are happy we are happy you are here or we are glad you are here we are glad you are here so click on save and then you can schedule our email to send to them every single day from Monday to Sunday and you can set a time that you want to send out the campaign to them or want to send them as soon as possible then you can also try with Google Analytics and right now what I'm going to do is design our email so using the, uh, the new builder beta uh, editor so I'm going to delete logo here this is not a logo then i'm going to change this email to welcome welcome to fredia store fredia store we are very glad you are here then i can we can personalize the the campaign based on their first name and to do that we just have to go back to our audience feed and match tag to copy the first name uh short code that uh, we need to import to input on our campaign so this is the first name short code so i'm going to copy it here and then come back to my campaign and paste it here so right now what this is going to do is it's going to target the customers based on their first name so it's going to change it to their first name like we did the other time then i'm going to add upload an image then use this as the default welcome image so it's uploading the image then we can link it to our website address so I'm um, just copy the link just copy the link here and paste it here so that's it now the next thing which I'm going to do is to add some product directly from my store from our store to this welcome email so to do that all you have to do is click on product here so drag it and then it's a connected store this is the name which we use um, so I'm going to click on next and it's going to search for all the available products that is uh, on our website so you can see right now these are the available products we have some of the available products so uh, then what I can do is so we have 28 products so I can click on it add the product so right now you can see I've added one product so I can add the content as well but I think I need to upgrade my uh, my amazing per account for me to be able to add content so you can add as many products as possible as many products as possible but instead of that let's choose this product this second one product recommendation so and uh, Going to click on let's ch choose new arrivals the number of recommendation products recommended products will be four and the range to display will be so let's choose vertical so instead of horizontal and change it to vertical so this will make sense yes So what um, what is going to happen here is that Mainchimp will automatically detect detect new arrived products on our WooCommerce store, and is going to automatically make changes and synchronize the new products uh, directly with this uh, email campaign. Anytime a new subscriber signs up or a new customer make purchase of new products on our store, so this that's the way it works. The title will be there price and the color then you can leave the background as well 
so what i can do here is edit this so i can remove the logo the viral badge and everything so once you are done setting up and designing we can preview our design our template So you can preview the template here and right now as you can see the uh, this is a website a website automation journey and uh, these are the normal normal emails transactional email for any e-commerce platform we have the pop-up form we have the abandoned cart email we have the product that are getting me the other notification and several others so so let's go back and uh, so you can enable live my tag info as well and you can see that it's changed it, this to victor so we are glad you are here victor and then the users will be able to add uh to see other available products so we can make changes to all this design our emails to make uh, to make more sense but i think you actually get the idea of how everything works so now we can click on exit preview mode or you can send a test email to our subscribers so this is actually going to work immediately we start adding new products a uh, new product to our website but we can also make changes to it instead of uh new arrivals you can change it to best sellers and it's going to show best best selling products to uh, uh new customers on our store so that is the way it works and once you are done with the first so we are done with the first email now you can click on plus again add a joining point so we can click on uh time delay wait for trigger if so uh here now let's use the if statement if and if statement here so adding the if and if statement so going back to a conditional match tag here so the if if statement is used to specify the new match tag to be matched against if the first match tag value is false so now your contact will join the part if they meet this condition so now we can create a condition for our for any of our subscribers to join this part so right now you can see the this is actually split so now if the contact so let's say for instance after they make purchase probably we want to split our customers based on uh let's say based on the amount spent in total so we are creating a condition for any customer that spent a minimum more than hundred dollars on our store so you click on save then i can actually create a new campaign so for any customers that make purchase of products that worth hundred dollar plus now we want them to receive this email so we want to send them this email maybe we want to send them a coupon code so uh here right now i'm going to leave all this as default i think you are getting the idea of how this work now uh you can tell send them a, a campaign something like you are you are one of are valued customers then i'm going to save that then click on the better builder and now we can send them create a coupon code on uh woocommerce so going back to our dashboard our website dashboard so to create a coupon code on woocommerce click on woocommerce and then you see a coupon code here so we can create a coupon code maybe a 10 percent discount to for all our customers that buy a product more than 100 dollars so i can create a coupon code here so we can create a coupon code here right now and then uh the coupon code can be something like 100 
dollar fredia 100 dollar fredia then the discount type is going to be percentage discount of 10 percent then uh maybe you want to set an expiration date until december 22 uh december 31st now we can use we can also set a usage restriction to the to the minimum spend so that means the minimum spend for any customers to be able to make use of this code they have to spend they must have spent a minimum of 100 dollars on our store and then the maximum spend we can leave that as as blank then the usage limit is the number the number of times customers can make use of this coupon code until it, it expires so the usage limit per coupon so we can set it as unlimited usage that means any customer can make use of it over and over again and then we can use it limit per user can be maybe okay usage limit per user can be the number of times we want the use users to a, a particular customer to make use of this cost of this uh short code so we can limit it to one that means every customer can only make use of this coupon code once and then uh using limit per coupon that means maybe the number of times we want the, the coupon code to be available for all customers on our source to make use of it so let's say we are creating like 50 coupon codes want this this code to apply to 50 different orders on our store so that's the way it work and then we can click on publish so this coupon code now we can input and send it out to all our customers that have made purchase of products that worth over 100 dollars on our store so i'm going to delete this so um then you are a valued customer you are a valued a valued customer then i'm going to include the name of the customer as well so here right now so you can use simply use the coupon code simply use the coupon code so i'm going to copy the coupon code now and uh, add it here so you can board it add an image so browse image here you can use the same image insert and that's all so this message or this this email is going to be sent out only to customers who have made purchase of products who have made purchase of products over 100 dollars on our store so now right now what i can do is click on save and return to join then we can also create another coupon code again another coupon code again for our customers who uh that have not made purchase of product that is uh equals to hundred dollars so you can say something like less hundred freedia So and probably we are giving them a five percent discount instead of ten percent. Then uh, the expiring date will be December thirty first. Then the minimum spend, but want the minimum spend to be a minimum of ten dollars. So that means this coupon code will only work for a, any customer that have make a purchase starting total order of a minimum of hundred dollars and then a maximum of 99 dollars spent on our store so that's the way it works so you can click on publish and then you can come back here click on add a customer journey another customer journey which will be sent out to customers that doesn't meet this requirements this condition which we set here that means they've not spent more than 100 dollars so send them an email as well and then the subject line we can change it to uh, you are a loyal customer you are one of our loyal customers so and now
and design the builder now we can include the coupon code that we just created uh, inside the campaign for our customers that have made purchase of products not up to hundred dollars so let me change this back so you are a loyal customer to us so you are a loyal customer to us and include their first name that is why that is why we are offering you a five percent discount on all your purchase to December 31st your coupon code your coupon code is so now we can add the coupon code and include it in our campaign add the image browse image so import the image as well then you can change this you can actually change this to shop now so you can change this to shop now shop now so you want to change the color you can change the color here color of the button and at the same time the background color so you can make edits to this and you are good to go so this is how you can keep creating and building uh, a customer layers not customer journeys based on uh, the actions a customers are taking or based on the goals that you have in mind for your e-commerce website so right now you can see here so this message will be sent out to customers that have made purchase of over hundred dollars and this message will be sent out to customers that have made purchase below hundred dollars can also uh, split it here and create uh, maybe a percent a percentage split you can set a time delay for the message to be sent out to them you can send an email with survey there are a lot of functionalities here which you can send out to people maybe you've been sending out a campaign to some customers and you've noticed that they've not been responding to any of your emails you can send them an unsubscribe message uh, and several other stuff as well so uh, this is how to set up a multilingual campaign this is how to set up uh, use the math tag statement so if you go through these resources you can send them data based on you can send them information based on data that is missing yes you can send them information based on data that is missing so for instance uh here right now we can create this conditional statement that uh, will be sent out to all our customers if their f name is available it should display their f name which is their first name else what they will receive is friend so for instance now uh, I can copy the short code and then come here click on so let's edit this I'm going to edit this campaign okay um, so I'm going to edit email content so right now we we are sending them a message personalized message you are a valued customer uh with the match tag which is uh first name match tag one which is first name here but let's take for instance uh what if it happens that the we are uh, the customer does not uh leave their first name uh as an input when they are making purchase or when they are making when they are making purchase of an item on our store so that means there is no way for us to know uh, what their first name is so uh and here right now we are sending them uh all our customers 
we are we've already had this matter which is matter guan that is going to change it to their first name but assume a customer that does not have a first name added in our audience list so how can we fix that so that is how we can use this uh the statement here which we copied earlier so that means if the first name is available then you should display the first name to them else uh you should display friend so what we are going to do here is i'm going to copy this short code and then i'm going to paste it here so I'm going to paste it here. So you have valued customer. So let me bold this and change it to black so we can see. Now what I'm going to do is to add a custom uh, data customer to our audience list without adding the first name. So uh, I'm going to add another email here, gmail.com, and I'm going to choose um, Dutch, and the date of birth, 9, 2, 26 years and above, then click on subscribe. So you notice I'm not having, uh, I did not include the first name of this customer in the audience. So now if I check right now, the email will be, the customer is already included in our audience list. So right now the contact information is added and, but there is no first name available. So now let's go back to our campaign. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to load this page so that it can synchronize the new contact information can synchronize with our campaign which we are creating So now what I'm going to do right now is click on enter the preview mode, then enable live match tag info. So right now you can see this is the new campaign uh, customer which we add uh, right now. But remember the customer was not having the customer was not having first name available. So now you can see the function of this. You are a valued customer friend. So mention automatically recognize that this customer is not having a first name added in our main chimp audience list so it automatically change the conditional statement to friend so i believe in this tutorial you've learned a lot about setting up a dropshipping store integrating main chimp with your woocommerce uh, wordpress website and how to create a conditional statement, creating different logics, and several other stores which we've discussed in this video. If you have any question, leave it in the comment section. I will try as much as possible to respond to you. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so that you get notified anytime I publish new video. See you soon.